Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, yeah, yeah. Oh, bless thee, oh Lord. With the heart of thanksgiving, a heart of thanksgiving, we bless you, oh Lord. Hey, I will bless thee, oh Lord. Yes, I will bless thee, oh Lord. With the heart of thanksgiving, I will bless thee, oh Lord. I will bless thee, oh Lord. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. With the heart of thanksgiving. Oh, oh, oh I will bless thee, O oh Lord. Hey, with my hands lifted up. And my mouth filled with Praise with the heart of thanksgiving. Oh, yeah, yeah, I will bless thee, O oh Lord. Yes, with my hands lifted up. Oh, and my mouth filled with praise. Yes, I will bless thee, O oh Lord. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. Yeah, yeah, I will bless thee, O oh Lord. The heart of thanksgiving, the heart of thanksgiving, yeah. Heart of thanksgiving, oh yeah, the heart of thanksgiving, oh, the heart of thanksgiving, heart of thanksgiving, yes, the heart of thanksgiving, oh, 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 oh. Lord, a heart of thanksgiving. Oh, I will bless thee, oh Lord. Hey, yeah, yeah. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Jesus. Give you the praise, Lord. Give you the honor, Lord. Give you the glory, Jesus. Say, you are worthy, Lord. You are so worthy, Lord. We say hallelujah, Jesus. We say hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, we say hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, Thank you, Lord. Yeah, we thank you, Jesus. We give you the honor. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We declare like David that we will bless you. As in the word, Psalm 34, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my, be in my mouth. I trust that that is your uh, sentiment in this moment, in this time of worship. And I trust that that is your testimony and your determination and declaration to bless the Lord 
with the heart of thanksgiving, to bless the Lord, even with our hands lifted up, to bless the Lord. That is to speak well of him, to ascribe praise to him, seeing that he is so worthy, so worthy to be praised. Thank all of you, the ABLM partners and viewers alike for joining in to the key to life in this moment as that we will delve into the word of the Lord and hear what the Lord will say to us in this moment at this time. I invite your attention over to Acts chapter number two, Acts chapter number two, and uh, I, I just say to the ABLM family, you all just uh, bear with your pastor because I, I certainly have this, this burden upon me and I almost sound redundant in preparing to speak. I wanted to say so many different things, but the Lord said to say this to the people. And so uh, uh, I'm always listening to hear and I'd rather be obedient to him in how that he is leading me to speak to you and into your lives. But I, I, as I alluded to say, I have this, this burden that the believers would be revived in the spirit of their purpose, and that is evangelism. So as I continue in this vein, as that like the last time we met, which was Sunday, talking about the spirit of go that is on me, and so many of you were blessed by that word, I want to continue with, again, um, Christ's post-resurrection message to his disciples before he ascended back up into heaven. It was 40 days that are recorded that Jesus walked the earth. The Bible says over in Acts chapter 1 that by many infallible proofs he showed himself. There were those that uh, witnessed with their own eyes, they saw. And uh, uh, here we are, here we are. We want to continue with his post-resurrection message. It was there in Acts chapter 1 verse number 8 that he says, um, after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall have power to be my witnesses. You know, a witness is that which can testify of what he or she has seen or have heard. And he says, I want you to be my witnesses in the earth, in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and the uttermost part of the earth, the uttermost part of the earth. So upon his post-resurrection, he resurrected from the grave and said, I want y'all to go back to Jerusalem, be endued, he says over in Luke 24, with power. The term endued means clothed or, or saturated with power. And uh, it was there in Acts chapter 2 that we understand there were those that were in the upper room, at least 120, as that is recorded, uh, that were obedient to Jesus' instruction. And it was 10 days in between his ascension to heaven and the 50th day, which was uh, the time of celebration, that of that of the festival of weeks or known as Pentecost. Yeah, there were three major feasts that Israel observed. It was the feast of Passover, which was prior to his death. And then it was the uh, feast of weeks or the feast of Pentecost. Uh, the number of the prefix Pente means 50th. So on the 50th day after Jesus rose from the grave, uh, there was something different that happened during this particular celebration, the Feast of Weeks and Pentecost. But let me give you the three, as I said, uh, it was Passover, it was the Feast of Weeks, and then it was the Feast of Tabernacles. All right, it was three major feasts that they observed. But this particular feast now in Acts chapter two was the feast and the time of Pentecost. And Jerusalem was the Mecca. It was the uh, central place of gathering for the holy activities and the observations uh, that they would from time to time observe. And so they were already in Jerusalem as Jesus said, but this particular Pentecost in Acts chapter two, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, it says that they were all together in one place with one accord. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. It filled all the house where they were sitting and uh, like fire, the Holy Ghost sat upon them like fire, the Bible says, and they begin to speak with other tongues. 
You know, when you look at tongues in the scripture, the Bible here says in Acts chapter 2 that they spoke with other tongues. It is the Apostle Paul, as he write over uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter number 12, he talks about the gift of tongues. And then he says in 1 Corinthians 14, when a man pray uh, in an unknown language to God, uh, he is praying mysteries unto God. When he prays uh, in an unknown tongue, he is, he is praying mysteries as unto God. And so you have other tongues, uh, Acts chapter 2, you have 1 Corinthians 12, the gift of tongues, and then you have the unknown tongue as what is mentioned in 1 Corinthians 14. But here in the text where it talks about other tongues, there's the Greek word that's called glossolalia, which means to speak with a split tongue. It is here where that the Holy Ghost, when it manifested, when it filled their hearts, when it sat upon them like fire. So you have three phenomenons here. There was the uh, sound like they had never heard before. It was like a rushing mighty wind, like what they had never felt before. And then the fire it sat upon them. Yeah, it sat upon them like fire, uh, like what they had never, never uh, experienced before. It was the dunamis of God. It was the dynamo, explosive power. Back to 1 8. Yeah, that's what he said. You shall have the dunamis. You shall have the explosive power. Glory to God. That gives you the grace as we've been talking about to go. And this is where I want to center your attention, believers, that you would be filled again. Yeah, be filled again with the Holy Ghost until it sit on you like fire. That you go and you accomplish his instructions for your existence. Did you get that? That you would accomplish his instructions for your existence. And the Bible says that when they begin to speak with other tongues, in verses 8 and 11, all those that had come from so many different parts of the world gathered in Jerusalem, but they all heard them speak in their own language, that means their own dialect. There were those that were from Mesopotamia and from Crete and from Libya and from uh, Cyrene and, and different parts, but, but they all heard them speak the wonderful works of God. Uh, whereas that this was a supernatural divine encounter, it wasn't so much of a heavenly language people that the people around them could not understand. That's right. God empowered them to speak a language so that the people around them could hear with their own dialect. And this is what opened and presented the opportunity for Peter to stand up and begin to declare to all these different men and people who had come what was happening. So you see, the power of God in your life and upon your life, it's not just on you and in you for you to have a personal divine encounter, but it's on you and in you so that you can be an agent in the earth, so that as you pray the prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, it happens through you. And so Peter begins to explain to them by preaching to them what was happening. He takes them all the way back to the prophets of old until he got all the way up to Joel and said, we are not drunk as you suppose. We're not mad, we're not crazy. This is the outpouring that Joel talked about that in the last days that God said he would pour out his spirit. Well, this is a partial pouring. This is what you all are witnessing. And Peter preached so good until somewhere around the 37th verse that all the people around said, oh my God, we, we can't take it no more. What must we do? So you understand, believer, as I speak to you, that your life and your testimony of being saved, as I talked about the last time we were together, identifying your world, the world of your job, the world of your neighborhood, the world of your daily going and activity, 
the reason why you are strategically placed there is so that you would be a, a witness. Yeah, you would testify by your lifestyle and you would also testify with your mouth as Peter did. You would give explanation why there is a glow on you. You would be able to give explanation why you don't behave and you don't react and you don't respond like the heathen or the unbeliever or this crazy world around you. How are you not bothered? These are all questions that other people around you have and they may not use the terminology that you are familiar with. They may say, what is it about you? I love your energy. I love your vibe. I love, I love this about you or that about you. I, I love the fact that you are always upbeat. Uh, let me help you understand that these are all triggers and indicators for you to be able to now articulate. That's right. Speak with other tongues. Tongues that the sinner can understand. Tongues that the drunkard can understand. Tongues that the child can understand. Tongues that the businessman or woman can understand. That's right. Speak with other tongues. Speak a language that makes sense. Until after that you have spoken that language, it is the end result of Peter's audience that they begin to cry, what must we do? It said, it said men and brethren, what must we do? That was their cry. We, we have heard enough. Now what must we do to be saved? And it is there in verse number 38, Acts chapter 2, that Peter says you've got to repent. So for those of you that want to know how to come into this joy and, and this peace and, and this bliss and this happiness in the midst of a chaotic world, in the midst of a dark world, in the midst of heartache and pain, how do we as Christians and believers clap our hands and lift our hands and sing? Well, here is how you come to this peace in God. You must repent. The word repent, the prefix re means do again. Uh, the suffix pent, it's like penthouse, top. So what happens is when you repent, when you turn away from what has caused you to have broken fellowship with God, when you turn away from uh, working dishonestly and, and, and living a life that's not pleasing unto the Lord. When you turn away from, now you've got to turn toward. So uh, repentance is turning away from and then converting to. So we repent from uh, the works of sin that displeases God. And then we turn toward uh, the, the ways of God that we find in the word of God. And so now the suffix pent, he takes you from the bottom and he places you back on top where we were from the beginning before Adam messed up by disobeying God's command to not eat of the tree of knowledge good and evil. From that time, all of humanity, as the psalmist says in Psalm 51, was born in sin. So Peter says, since you want to know how to have what I have, how to have what we have, how to have what you've seen here, repent. And not only that, but he says, be baptized. Why baptism? Because baptism, according to what Jesus says in Matthew 28, uh, verses uh, 18 through 20, and even Mark's perspective of the gospel in Mark 16, 15 through 20, baptism identifies us with Jesus. That's right, baptism in water, we submerge. That is symbolic to say that when uh, we go down into the water, the old man, the old nature, the nature of lying, the nature of cheating, the nature of stealing, the nature of violence, the nature of fighting, and, and that old nature is dead, and he's buried. And when you come up out of the water, you come up symbolically in the newness of life that represents resurrection. Why are we baptized in his name? Because the church is considered to be the bride of Christ, which would make him the husband man. And just as in the natural, when the bride walks down the aisle, and the preacher asks when she gets to the altar, who doth giveth this woman to be married to this man? It is the father that says, I do. 
what is he saying? He's saying that I'm releasing her, my daughter, from my covering and I'm submitting and relinquishing her to the covering of her husband. And so she leaves her father's covering, which means she leaves her father's identity and name and she takes on her husband's name. So it is the bride of Christ. We are baptized in Jesus' name because we take on his identity. So Peter says in 238 of Acts, repent and be baptized every one of you uh, for the remission of sins, meaning the removal of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The gift of the Holy Ghost is again the power of God that comes into your life where he fills you with his presence that now gives you the grace it gives you the mindset it gives you the wherewithal to never go back to what you have forsaken to never turn back to what you have repented from you need the gift of the holy ghost you need the spirit of god dwelling in you constantly every day that's right the gift of the Holy Ghost, which is the power of God. And now, given you the context, I want to read here uh, these verses starting at verse number 41. And uh, as I alluded to say at the top, ABLM, sons and daughters, hear, hear the word of the Lord. And not only this message is to the local church that I pastor, but this message is to the body of Christ at large. The title of this message is House to House. I've been challenging and pulling on our leaders and even our ministers specifically lately. But as I said on Sunday, I have elevated the entire church. All of the believers, that's right, are challenged to, to carry out the great commission that Matthew says in 28, Mark says in 16, and that is to go into all the world and preach the gospel. When you hear the term all, it sounds daunting and almost impossible if you're not willing to go anywhere. But I challenge you to look at your world right where you are. Right where you are in this moment begins your world. And won't you hear the word of the Lord as ministered? We see here now the blueprint, the original blueprint of the early church. That's right, it was here in Acts chapter two that we now see the first century church that was birthed during the time of this Pentecost celebration. Let's take a look at their behavior patterns. Let's take a look at their characteristics. Let's take a look at their practices. And then we can measure and we can line ourselves up with what we see in them to see how far off we are or how close we are. Let's take a look at the original blueprint here in Acts chapter number two, verse number 41, and 46 is the key verse that encompasses our thought house to house. I'm challenging you all, ABLM sons and daughters. I thank God for so many of you that uh, reached out to me on Sunday and said, Pastor, yes, uh, I've already began a Bible study with my husband. Uh, with my mother, with my children, with my co-workers. And I'm looking for more of you. I'm listening to hear more of you that will not only say amen to this word, but that will begin to act according to this word. In other words, ministers and elders, I am beyond the point of just briefing with you and redundantly repeating these principles. I'm at the point now where uh, I am looking for the demonstration, that's right, of you acting out what the early church did, made the believers, this is the season for the believers to be baptized not only in water, not only in the Holy Ghost experience where we make ourselves feel better, but be baptized in purpose, to be baptized in the aim and the objective for our existence and this walk and journey of salvation. It's not just for you to testify, to come when we come and shout and dance. All of that's wonderful, but the Holy Ghost is upon you to be a witness in Jerusalem, in Judea, 
in Samaria and the uttermost parts of, of the earth. So here in Acts chapter 2, uh, verse number 41, let's, let's take a look at it. And from this point moving forward, I'm going to do, uh, let's see if you can track with me, maybe a little bit of an expositorial type teaching here, Acts chapter 2. And uh, let's hear this. I feel like the Apostle Paul, there are so many more things that, 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 that I want to say to you, ABLM, but the Lord has me here and I have to be obedient. So as soon as, as, soon as you all uh, gravitate to this word, and not only gravitate again and saying amen and thumbs up and hearts, but I mean gravitate in doing it, then the Lord can move me on to something else. But this is, this is, this is a perfect time for the church to understand and be reminded she is not limited to brick and mortar. She's not, she's not limited to uh, the service and the activity that's had in the brick and mortar. But may she understand who she is and what she is supposed to be doing in the earth. She is not just the church to have church. She's the church to be the church. And more than be the church, to go and to win the loss. Those that are, that are darkened in their mind, those that have been separated from the peace of God. It is, it is our responsibility to live a life and preach a message that will prick them in their hearts. Like in Acts chapter two, that they say, I need to join in with you. Where do you go to church? What is it about you? I need to be a part. I need to have what you have. That's what it's all about, people. That's what it is all, that's what it's all about. So here, Acts chapter 2, verse number 41. Uh, then they gladly received this word. They were baptized, and the same day, get this, you all, there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. How are we doing, ABLM? We know since January that we've had some uh, members join, some members join our church. But here we are in the fourth month. How are we doing? Uh, this happened in one day. That there were 3,000 souls. I imagine, imagine if point number one, you would gladly receive the word. That, that's point number one. Gladly receive the word. When we look at the early church's model, their pattern, their behavior, they gladly received the word. So, when you gladly receive the word, and I'm so blessed by so many of you, don't stop. There are many of you, you text me while I'm preaching and ministering, and others, you talk about how much the word has blessed you, and that is encouraging and inspiring. I feel some of you pulling on me while I'm ministering. You, you're sitting on the edge, and, and, and it makes preaching and teaching that much more easier because, because there, is, there, there are hearts that are receptive to receive. Nothing like ministering and preaching uh, into good soil as, as we are sowing the seed of the word. Nothing like having soil and good ground to pour into. So I know that I'm pouring into good ground. And that's a good, that's a good attribute that you have, that you gladly receive the word. I'm telling you, there are times that I'm in the word of the Lord, midday, early morning, wee hours of the morning. I'm, I'm in the word of the Lord. You know what? Because I gladly receive the word. I love good preaching and teaching. I love fundamental teaching of the word because I gladly receive. I receive the word of God with joy. First of all, I'm happy I can hear the Lord speak to me and through his word. It's a sign that he loves me. This, this is his love book to us. And so uh, th there is a posture and there is a pattern of receiving the word. When the word of the Lord is going for, that's not the time that you share with, with others. You, you need to be locked in. You need to be in tune. You, you need to zone in because these are, as we used to say, the acronym, uh, the basic instructions before leaving earth, the Bible, basic instructions before leaving earth. So you need your basic instructions on Sunday. You, you need it on Wednesday. And the days in between, you need to go back and review and research and let it become a part of you. So they gladly receive the word, not murmuring and complaining, gladly receive the word, not with their lips poked out, 
gladly receive the word. Not burden and oh, we got to go listen. No, they gladly. I can't wait for the next time, says them. And this is the type of enthusiasm. Hallelujah. This is the type of passion and vigor. This is the type of excitement that you must have. God will use your personality. But I just want you to think about some of the things that have ever made you happy in life that have ever brought true joy to your life. That relationship, that uh, activity, that event, that vacation, that trip, whatever that was. And, and, and now I want you to consider your receptivity to the Word of God. You know, you're behind the camera and there's so many distractions that you have to deal with. And so it takes a special discipline to steal your atmosphere to command your space to be quiet and everybody around you so we can hear. Because man cannot live by bread alone. He needs every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And then after you hear it, you've got to gladly receive it with enthusiasm. You know, when you get good news, first thing you want to do is share with somebody else. Well, here's the good news of the gospel. And the first thing that you should want to do is share with somebody else. Why haven't you shared as simple as liking this moment on your social media and then tagging somebody else? That's just how easy it is to just share this moment. Share this moment. Why don't you go ahead and do that? Share this moment. That's the sign that, you know what, I gladly receive the word of the Lord that comes forth from my ministry and from my man of God and, and prophet. I, I gladly receive the instructions of what God is saying to me. I'm so glad that I want to share it with you. I'm so glad that, that I can't wait to begin now to act out and to do what I've received. They gladly receive the word. They were baptized, and the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. You know why? Because joy begets joy. Gladness begets gladness. If, if every day you're going to just blend in with people that are confused and lost, and then begin to use verbiage that, that testifies they are confused and lost, if you're going to blend in and sound like them, then there's nothing different about you that brings joy to them. There, there's nothing different about you that resembles or reflects that says to them, I need what you have. There's no difference. But after you gladly receive the word, go ahead and shout over it. Go ahead and dance over it. Go ahead and barak and shabak and yada and all of those expressions of praise. But after you do all that, there ought to be some souls that you impact. Hallelujah. With your glad, your spirit of gladness, your exuberance, your intensity and excitement for the word of God. There should be souls at it because you gladly received his word. Verse number uh, 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread, and in prayers. So point number two here, when we look at the early church and their behavior, in verse number 42, uh, they had what we call here now, uh, continue, continue diligently. That's right. They had continual diligence, which I'm saying to you, like what they did, that we must do, and that is we must continue diligently. But, but consider this now. They, they considered or they continued as we consider in the apostles' doctrine. So doctrine means teaching. They continued steadfastly without wavering to the right or wavering to the left. They were diligent. They were disciplined. They stayed with it. They stayed with the apostles' doctrine. They stayed with fellowship. There's a Greek word called kononia. You know, I, I learned in pastoring uh, for some years now that uh, the post-service activity 
when we, when we were gathering pre-COVID, you know, there are a lot of people that they, they would come to the church and, and, and the folk wouldn't hardly leave the church. They start uh, talking and fellowshipping and interacting and engaging and then you turn the lights out and then they go stand in the parking lot and talk some more. Uh, and then they go out to eat and talk some more. Uh, there was a time uh, when I was growing up in the church, uh, we, we would actually go over to each other's houses and we'd have dinner, whatever you were having for dinner. If I'm coming over, then that's what I'm having too. We had true kononia. We had true fellowship. That's fellows in the ship having interaction and engagement with one another. Now, we have sort of uh, been disrupted a bit We've got hygienic practices that we have to observe and social distance, uh, but may the church not lose her fervor for fellowship because there are still many ways that we can accomplish it and still be safe and still keep each other safe. So you see the whole idea of, you know, um, I, I just, I just want to come, I just want to sing and shout worship the Lord, and I want to hear the word of the Lord. Yeah, all that's good, but don't forget that you are a member of a body. And as 1 Corinthians 12 says, the eye can't say to the ear, I don't want anything to do with you. In fact, when you look at the dimensions of the cross, it is vertical and horizontal, which means that our devotion to God is important as our devotion and respect for one another. They had fellowship. They had fellowship. They continued in, continued in the apostles' doctrine. They had fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Now the breaking of bread part, we don't have no problem with that. We, we know how to break bread. My God, you call a prayer meeting and, and uh, we're missing some numbers, but you call a barbecue, call a, call a church rally, call a, call a church picnic. In fact, you know, we have what we call now prayer breakfast and pre-COVID, prayer lunch. We gotta put some food with it. There gotta be some breaking of bread to, to, to get some people to participate. But, but this was part of the behavior pattern of the early church. So you, you ask yourself, how, how we're measuring? How are we faring? And I want to say to the church, and this is not to thumbs down or reduce the severity of this global crisis that we're still a part of. I am not licensing anyone to go and live recklessly or to intrude or to not give full credence to other people's space. But I am saying to the church, ABLM, it's time to get over COVID in the sense of where that uh, we have had restrictions and, and, and other reasons for why we've fallen back and we've not done this. Uh, because the truth of the matter is that uh, all the arenas around us have figured it out, church. And even the people that are a part of the church have been doing some things outside the church where you would think that there was no COVID. Even the church, even, even the church, may I add. So, so, so let us not use this global crisis for an excuse to not follow the pattern of the early church. Point number one, gladly receive the word. Don't tune me out at this point. And point number two, continue diligently. That's what they did. That's what they did. You ought to continue in the teaching that you receive. You ought to continue in the fellowship while I'm at it. Brothers, come on, men. Be a part of that men's fellowship. That, that's what that is. Set your timer. Set, set your alarm. Set, set your life to be a part. They continued in fellowship. Seniors, I am looking for more seniors to become part of the golden women and men. I don't know why y'all forget the second Saturday. It comes every month. And you should be a part of that fellowship. When we talk about life groups, these are life groups. Come on, parents. Your children should be a part of key kids as they meet first Sunday, second Sunday, third Sunday. And then there's a fourth Sunday where there's a devotional sit. There are actually staff set in motion that give themselves the prayer and reading and studying to minister to your children. Church, ABLM, sons and daughters, uh, when are we going to have a prayer service? There's one every day, 30 minutes a day, 15 minutes, 6 a.m. in the morning, 
and 15 minutes, 6 p.m. in the evening. The question is, why are you not on the line? Why won't you join in? In fact, Brief, let's see if we can put that fly up right now. Let, let, let me make sure you can see what the conference call line is. And even to the viewers that are watching, you can be a part of this. Because they continue diligently in the teaching, in fellowship, in breaking of bread, and in prayer. I am calling this entire church back to prayer, to the time of prayer. There, there is no reason why that one of these time segments that you are not on the line. In addition, I'm calling you to house to house. Bible study in your home, from your home. Prayer in your home. Bring the family together. If you live alone, you gather yourself together and get somebody else on the line. In addition to the set times of prayer, let, let your house become a house of prayer. Let your house become a house of fellowship. Let your house become a house that gladly received the word. That's right. That's right. They continue diligently. Let's see what the next verse uh, says in verse number 43. And fear came upon every soul. See, people want to know where are the miracles. Uh, there has to be reverence first. There has to be a reverence. Uh, Jesus says in Mark 16, uh, these signs shall follow you as you believe. Saying I believe and not doing anything about what you believe says nothing. The Bible says over in James 2 that uh, faith without works is dead. So if you believe in this word, you got to begin to act out this word. And then signs and wonders will follow. What happens is, is the believers keep coming among the believers, testifying to one another. The believers keep coming with more believers to the time of revival. The believers, when we do open the doors of the church, they keep coming by themselves or they invite other believers. So these are the results that you have, that believers are bubbling over with joy, that believers are excited, that believers have received the breakthrough, that believers need to be revived again. And there are no signs and wonders because there are no unbelievers being changed by the believers' encounter. There are no supernatural divine encounters because the believers are keeping it all to themselves. I've said to the elders and ministers, sure, you go ahead and lead a Bible study, but not with other members of the church. I'm doing that already. Unchurch, non-members, not even members of anyone else's church. Why? Because we are called for the purpose to be witnesses, not just to each other, that's why no joy breaks forth because we didn't heard this before. But when you tell it to somebody who has never heard it, when you share it with somebody that's hungry and thirsty, my God, hallelujah. It's an all different experience. The Lord moves differently. The Lord smiles differently. The Lord, the Lord shows himself differently. Come on, believers. Come on, sons and daughters, and be baptized in the spirit of evangelism. House to house. I am in this house, the house of God, but now I'm in your house. And it's important for you to take it from your house and spread it to somebody else's house so their house can be blessed. House to house. We're getting there. We're working up to it. But fear came upon every soul and many wonders. Wonders mean what causes somebody to be in awe never seen it like this. That's what they said over in Mark chapter number two, when they carried the man that was sick of palsy, uh, four men carried him. When they could not get in through the door, they went up to the roof and they broke up the roof and they lowered him. And then Jesus began to speak and say, thy sins are forgiven thee. They became indignant and wonder who was he. He says, well, what is easier for me to say? Thy sins be forgiven or pick up thy bed and walk. I did this, I said this, so that you would know that the Son of Man has power on the earth. I want to say to the believers, come on and be baptized all over again. And know that you have power on the earth. To forgive sin. And to heal the sick. 
And here's what I wanted to get to the 12th verse. They said, we've never seen it like this on this fashion. God wants to use you in this day and time so that after he uses you to impact those that you will impact, they will be left in awe. And they will say, I've never experienced glory to God. Hey, my God, my God, my God. I have never experienced this before. God is going to use you to pray. God is going to use you to share your faith. God is going to use you to brighten up someone's day and it will cause them to be in awe. Oh my God. The way you keep your cool, the way you don't lose it, the way you refuse to panic, it will cause them to wonder and be in awe. And the Bible said, and signs. You know what signs are. They are indicators to show you where you are versus where you need to be. And also to let you know that you've arrived. Signs, indicators. Well, when fear came upon every soul, they were in awe and they begin to see the evidence that this Holy Ghost power, these people, they were special. They were somewhat different. And it caused others to, to gravitate. So, so point number three, uh, uh, there has to be reverence first. There has to be reverence first. Verse number 43, before the signs and the wonders. 44, and all that believed were together and had all things common. Uh, so this says to us here in point number four, verse number 44, uh, belief equals commonality. Belief equals commonality. I am speaking to the local church that I pastor, but even the body of Christ at large, in order for there to be commonality, in, in order for there to be uh, an even plight or ground that we stand on together, we've got to believe at the same time. And the scripture says over in Romans 10, 17, that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. I know that there's commonality in the sons and daughters that I passed as the spiritual father and the chief servant because their lives sort of, sort of twin. They, their lives sort of blend. Their lives look like. See, tithers have the same testimony. I told, I told the last time we were together, those of you that know and can, can serve as a witness to, to the principles of giving, there were so many of you that could testify. That's because belief equals commonality. Thank God for all of you, the faithful givers. There are others of you that have not been so faithful. I already know that your testimony is different because God honors his word and when we honor his word in being obedient, and then, then it makes him obligated to do what he does because his word, according to Isaiah 55, it never goes out and return void. It accomplishes. And I speak over this, over this viewing audience and to the sons and daughters, believe equals commonality. That's right. I'm blessed. You're blessed. I'm prosperous. You're prosperous. You know why? Because you believe in the word of the Lord and we're going to have all things in, in common. There's peace in my home. There's peace in your home. Why? Because it's going from house to house. There's an anointing in this house. There's an anointing in your house because it's going from house to house. There's a blessing in this house. There's a blessing in your house because it's going from house to house. There's healing in this house and it's in your house because it's going from house to house because of our belief our receptivity for the word and then and then our application of the word says we believe and therefore we like them the early church have all things common verse number 45 and sold their possessions get this people plural and goods plural and parted them to all men as every man had need it was just yesterday that I sent the text to those that I'm looking to lead the way in the areas of mission, 
where the whole church rally together and be mission-minded. You know why? Because it's not just enough for us to sit back and say we are blessed. We've got to show, show forth some signs that says we're blessed. And I want to speak to you just like the early church uh, in point number five now from verse number 45, and this is prophetic, no lack, I speak no lack. There is no lack in your life. There is no lack in your body. There is no lack in your finance. There is no lack in your house. You know why? Because there is no lack in this house. Every time we uh, proclaim and declare an offertory decree, we say, Lord, thank you for every need of this house being met. And the need of the house is met because of the liberal givers. You see here the early church, one characteristic of being spirit-filled was giving. They gave so that there would be no lack. And I want to say to the ABLM sons and daughters, there will be no lack. You know why? Because we are blessed with possessions and goods so much that if you look like you're lacking, we will stand together and bless you, and bless you. you know, there are some that hijack the stream and come on and just watch and put up their cash app. We're going to bless you, but you have to understand there is a benefit to being tied to a local assembly, to having a pastor, to having a spiritual covering. Sure, we're going to give. The Bible says, do good to all men, 610 of Galatians, especially to those who are the household of faith. So we don't join to just have the fish in the loaf for a benefit. We join because we know that there's a purpose for our existence and that God has anointed us. And so when we join into a local assembly and become part of a family, now the purpose for which God has caused us to be in existence can begin to play out and serve others. We can become groomed and trained and mentored on how to use our, our gifts. So there's no lack. There's no lack because you are a part of a body of support, a body of prosperity, a body that says, if I have, you have. A body that says, when you hurt, I hurt. If you're down, I will condescend and minister to you and help pick you up. No lack, no lack. 46, we finally get here, and they continue in daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread. Here it is, from house to house. Here is the assignment. We have mastered the temple activity, how to usher, how to greet, how to play an instrument, how to sing, how to buck, how to shout, how to dance, how to do temple activity. But now, May we develop and evolve on how to master house to house, how to mimic what happens in the temple to make sure it's happening in the homes. Hallelujah. House to house, from the Lord's house to your house. Your house becomes his house. Prayer and worship and singing and shouting and fellowship, commonality, uh, glad receptivity for the word signs and wonders hallelujah are happening house to house let me give you the last point here verse number 47 well let me deal with the latter in here I got happy over house to house they did eat meat with gladness and singleness of heart let, let me say to you learn how to be content with your house. Uh, you should love to go home to your house because your house should be a sanctuary. If there's arguing in that house, rebuke it and get it out of your house. If there's a chaotic environment in your house, if your house is hostile, rebuke it and get it out of your house because your house should be a sanctuary. It should be a place where you eat your meat with gladness, with appreciation, and with singleness of heart. Not wishing you had somebody else's house, somebody else's family. No, be glad for yours and give thanks in yours. And whatever's not right in yours, make it right. Forgive, pardon, extend, 
surrender, submit. They did eat their meat with singleness of heart and gladness of heart. That's important. Now catch this verse number 47. Let me let you go. Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be, should be saved. Did I give them all their points, uh, Bree? Let me make sure. Gladly receive the word, verse number 41. Continue diligently. Reverence first. Belief equals commonality. No lack. And let me give you this last point here from verse number 47. The Bible says they continued daily. They were praising God. They had favor with all the people. They're praising God. They had favor with all the people. They're praising God. They had favor with all the people. Uh, let, let me tell you that, you know, these praise breaks that we like to have, believers, to make us feel good. Well, after you feel good in your praise break, you should have favor with bankers, favor with politicians, favors with millionaires, favors in the marketplace. See, after you do the temple activity and the temple dance and the temple run and the temple shout and the temple, 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 <laughs> you should have favor on your job, in your neighborhood. Because these two went together, praising God and, hear the conjunction, and having favor with all the people. See, when you have favor with people, there's nothing that they won't do for you. There's, there's no space that they won't let you in because favor means access. They praise God, but they had good relations with people. I'm afraid that the church has learned how to praise God, but they don't have good relations with people. And no wonder they can't win anybody. You can't praise God in the temple and have a nasty attitude on the job. Praising God and having favor with the people, the Lord added to the church. So the Lord will do his part when we do, when we do our part. And the last point that I leave with you is the purpose of favor. It's not just so you can get a new house, you can have some new rags, you can have some new wheels, and you can have a little money in your pocket. No, there's more to favor than that. Having favor with the people is to have power on the earth, hallelujah, to accomplish the will of God. From house to house. I'm looking for more of you ABLM sons and daughters to text me tonight. Text me. Let me know. I'm at it, Pastor. I'm on it. That's right. I'm stirred up. I'm revived in the spirit of go, in the spirit of evangelism. What should I say? What the Lord said. What should I say? What I just said. You, you got my seven points, my six points that I done. You got them? Now go ahead and work them. Go ahead and share them. Go ahead and use them. And bless somebody else. Come on, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we say thank you. Thank you for this time in your presence to be reminded by your word for our purpose. That the purpose of our power it's not just to say we have it, that we've been running for a long time, and all the other cliches that we use that make us sound good amongst other people that sound like us. But the purpose for the power is to go into all the world and to save men and women, boys and girls that are lost. And those that are seeking for the power, come on, lift your hands right where you are. Spirit of the living God, Go into the hearts and into the minds and into the soul of that person that's seeking, that says, Lord, I need your power. Yeah, I need this power that this preacher, this man of God is talking about. Give it to me. Go ahead and repent of your sin. Commit your life to Jesus. Open up your heart. Open up your mind. Lift your hands and he will fill you. Go ahead and begin to, even in your own way, say, Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And he will fill you with his love. Fill you with his power. Fill you with his anointing. Fill you with his presence. And even you will speak with new tongues. And you'll begin to go forth in the power like Peter, like the early church, in the earth, making a difference in the lives, in the lives of others. 
You're looking for a church home, look no further. We're here and we will receive you. Go right now to the website, ablm one the number one, dot org, and look for the link, join, become a partner. And we'll follow up and reach out to you and connect you and begin to pastor you and train you and teach you in the word of God so that you can do and fulfill your purpose in the earth. Thank God for prayer. Thank God for his word. Clap your hands and give him thanks. House to house. May the spirit of God be on you until you get down to the house of your cousins, your nieces, your nephews, sons and daughters, neighbors, and impact their lives. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You all have been so wonderful to have tuned in to be a part of this, the key to life. And this moment in space to minister the word. Now gladly receive the word and go and do what the word has said to you to do. Make the adjustments in the areas that you've fallen shy. Repent. Turn around. And serve God. Walk with God. Do what God says do. At this time, we're honoring the Lord in our giving. All the ABLM sons and daughters and partners, you have a tithe Go ahead and release it to the Lord as the instructions screen appears on how you can give. Go ahead and release your tithe. Go ahead and release your tithe. He gives us 100% and he requires the tenth. Gladly receive the word and be obedient and honor the Lord with the tenth. And then I'm asking all the others, you've been blessed to release a $20 offering as in the midweek we do. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it in this moment, in this time. Let's do it in this moment in time. I don't know if we have that flyer, Brie, as there are many of our sons and daughters that have received the uh, flyer that of this Saturday. I'm asking that all of you would tune in at 10 a.m. as that a link will be released. I want you to share that flyer with your family and friends as we take a look at our health. Take a look at our health. We're going to go in the spirit of God. We need to be healthy when we go. We're going to accomplish the purpose of God in our life. We need to be healthy. And so there's an awareness that I'm calling you to on Saturday as that a nurse practitioner will uh, be part of the uh, Zoom and we'll hear and we'll discuss some topics, take a look at ourselves and see where we are and where we need to do better, mm -hmm. how we should do better. So I want all of you to help promote, push, and encourage, and make yourselves available. One good thing about Zoom, uh, you can tune in from anywhere and be a part. So I want you to do that. Uh, the text is gonna go back out, and uh, you, can, you, can, you can be blessed. You can be blessed. I'm not sure if the fly, we have it. Yeah, that's it. But I want you to share that, and I want you to be a part of that, and spread the word so that others can be blessed too. Others can be blessed too, made aware of what they should know. And for others, it will be a reminder for you. But uh, this is how we speak in other tongues. Speak in the tongue of what produce and projects and promotes good health. Because that's where true wealth begins with good health. All right? So come on and be a part of that. And uh, Sunday morning, Sunday morning, we're coming out again for in-person service. So you can go to the website as soon as tonight and register as we observe the protocols that we've uh, deemed to try to keep everybody safe. For those of you that are looking to come to the house of God, uh, this Sunday morning, by God's grace and help, we will be in person. So we're inviting that you come. So you go and register now so you can already be uh, on the registration form and list and then you'll come 10 a.m. Sunday morning, worship the Lord together in the beauty of holiness. Others, you will stay back and watch virtually, and that is totally, totally fine. Nothing wrong with it at all. But nonetheless, whether virtual or in person, hollow the space, and let's give it to the Lord. We believe here at A Better Life Ministry that the key to life is a better life. Go in God's peace until next time. God bless you.